Hey everybody. So in this video, I want to do a review of the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Zord Ascension Project Astro Megazord. So this one just arrived in the mail from GameStop. So I uh, actually I pre-ordered this on the Hasbro Pulse website. And, uh, you know, I was trying to wait patiently, but then I actually uh, got a uh, GameStop gift card for uh, 30 bucks. So I was looking on the GameStop website and uh, this pre-order was available. It said that it was supposed to come out on April 5th. And I thought, well, I don't really want to have to spend the whole 165, but if I can get $30 off with this gift card and another $5 off for my Game Shop, uh, GameStop Rewards membership, I figured, why not? Might as well get, get it for 130 instead of 165. And that's what I did. Now it didn't come out on April 5th, uh, but it did come out a couple days later. And like I said, I just received this in the mail. And let me tell you, this is one heavy, heavy box. When I uh, picked up the box that got delivered, I was very surprised how heavy it was. And then when I got it out of the shipper box, um, again, I was very, very surprised at just how heavy this Zord is. So I actually never owned the original Astro Megazord. Um, I didn't watch Power Rangers in space until um, actually somewhat recently, probably within the last uh, seven years or so, um, because I just, uh, it was really kind of when uh, the Legacy collection came out from Bandai um, you know, I was getting the legacy Zords and I got some of the legacy figures. Um, I have my camera positioned here so you can see a lot of my Power Ranger collection. Um, and it was really, you know, the, the legacy collection and uh, Power Rangers Dino Charge that really, really got me a lot more interested in Power Rangers. So back when it was on Netflix, I actually started watching Power Rangers from the very, very first episode all the way to when, you know, Dino Charge started, because I started watching Dino Charge when it was on regular TV. So the Astro Megazord isn't really a Zord that I would consider to be nostalgic for me. It's not really a Zord that, you know, hits me in the feels the way that the uh, Zords from MMPR do, but it's really, really cool. And from the pictures and everything, it seemed like this Zap Megazord is going to be quite amazing. I did not get the Zap Dino Megazord or Dragon Zord, mostly because I already have the the you know two originals and I have the two Legacy collection, and I just didn't really feel like it was necessary for me to get those as well. But since this is my very first Astro Megazord, I honestly don't know what to expect because I know what it looks like from the show. But I've actually never, ever held any sort of Astro Megazord in my hands before. So let's dive in here. Taking a look at the packaging, uh, I've already uh, cut the tape because there was tape pretty much everywhere. So every kind of end of the box had tape on it that I had to like kind of cut open. And unfortunately, right out of the box, my package did sustain damage okay so i didn't do this it came this way all right it's not a huge deal i'll probably just tape it up but this is actually a slip cover kind of hard to get off when it's ripped but it does slide off of there and then you can see the front here so now that's with the slip cover removed. Oh, by the way, the slip cover has this on the back. So you can see what it comes with and a picture of the Megazord. Really, really cool looking. So here is the side of the box. Now this, the uh, you know back, 
this is another kind of like cover, I guess you would say. So here's the side. And what you have to do is once you cut all the corners of tape off, it just lifts out like so. Here's what the inside of the box looks like. So it's actually the Megazord fighting a clip tour, which is really cool. So this box is nice. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty neat box all in all. Then you have this on the front, which is, you know, like a computer control panel type deal. And then this just kind of comes out. And then there is the Megazord in the box with the tissue paper. So I'm going to turn this over. And I guess this isn't really tissue paper. It's more like a plastic wrap kind of feeling. So I'm assuming that there's more in here. So there you go, you take off, it looks like a little T. So you take that cardboard out and you've got all of the little accessories. Lots and lots of stuff in here. <laughs> and take this out. And there is another little thing of accessories here. Take that out. And we've got some instructions, which I'm definitely going to have to look this over because, like I said, I never owned the Astro Megazord as a kid. I've never had any sort of Astro Megazord. So I, you know, really have no idea how to go about transforming this thing. But here's the instructions. And I'm definitely not going to try to do any of this on camera. So we'll just have to, you know, uh, take a break and come back. But let's take a look at all the accessories first. So the thing in the long blue box must be the sword, and it is. And man, this sword is huge. I mean, very, very nicely done. Yeah, so that's cool. And then in one little baggie, we have got alternate hands. So we have got two kind of open displayed hands and two weapon holding hands as I hit the camera. <laughs> so here are the weapon holding hands. Pretty cool. There isn't, yeah, there isn't any articulation. These are just kind of one big chunk of plastic. And then the holes on it, of course. Uh, let's see what's in the next baggie of accessories. Okay, so this, uh, I'm going to find out what this is. Uh, this is more pieces to the Megazord. So <laughs> there's that. I feel like more and more like I'm opening a Transformer than a Zord, which I guess they're kind of like Transformers, I suppose. Now, in this baggie, in the, in the smallest baggie, we get all the little ranger figures. So we get, man, these are so tiny. Get a little, little black ranger. If it'll focus, doesn't really want to focus on these. Let's see. I can get the camera. Uh, it doesn't want to focus on this little guy, but you get a black ranger and a pink ranger, and a yellow ranger, <laughs> and a blue ranger. I mean, these are pretty cute, but they are tiny, super, super tiny. And there's the red ranger. And then finally, in the last bag of stuff, we have got the little shuttle which is, I mean, this is cute. Just the little shuttle, and then this becomes the Megazord's head. So there we go. Those are all the parts that are all in the little baggies. So we get quite a bit here. And now I really want to see the Zord.
This basically feels like wrapping paper. Okay, wow. So yeah, it's heavy. Uh, it's it's very heavy. Uh, it's kind of hard to even hold one hand, honestly, for my uh, for my angle. So it is pretty cool looking. I mean, this is how it looks out of the box. So it's got this little piece of uh, cardboard kind of protecting the symbol there. It's very, very shiny. Um, I know it's not die cast, but it must be some kind of chrome or something because this isn't just shiny paint. So it's really, really cool. And it's got these little guns. So there you go. There's the Astro Megazord in ship form. Um, it even, yeah, it even has wheels. So you can actually kind of like wheel it around and it actually wheels around really nice. Like it's really, really smooth. So I'm gonna probably spend the next couple hours messing around with this thing. And uh, we'll be back for the rest of the review. All right, everybody. So here is this magnificent Zap Astro Megazord. So I have a uh, little Andros here. Uh, this is the uh, In Space Red Ranger Lightning Collection figure. So you can see how incredibly huge this Megazord is. I mean, look at the size of this thing. And I couldn't even get the whole thing in the shot with the sword. It is, I, I am just almost speechless as to just how big and heavy this thing is. And I talked about the price already. And I got to say, um, I'm not going to say that this is a steal at 165, but uh, I, I think that it's uh, relatively fairly priced. I'll put it that way. Because, wow, uh, this thing is quite amazing. Um, and like I said before, I don't even have like a real strong nostalgic connection to the Astro Megazord the way that I do the uh, Zords from MMPR. But wow, this guy is huge. And honestly, the transformation was not even that bad. But what I'm going to do, since I do have him in his full Megazord form, I'm going to do some comparisons before getting into all the little fine details of the review. So if this doesn't tell you how big this guy is, let's get rid of Andros. And let's bring in the original vintage Dino Megazord from Mighty Morphin. So Remember that the Vintage Megazord is slightly bigger than the Legacy Collection Megazord. And you can see that the Astro Megazord is still so huge. Um, so my Legacy Megazord, I actually have it in the separate Zords in my display. And I thought, well, this is a perfectly fine comparison because if anything, the Vintage Megazord uh, is a little bit more um, bulkier, I would say. Now, of course, the Legacy Megazord is heavier because of all the die casts, but the Legacy Dino Megazord is a little bit smaller in terms of height and in terms of width. So <laughs> this Astro Megazord is kind of ridiculous how big it is. So let's take a look at an even bigger Megazord. Here is the Legacy Thunder Megazord, which is not the sturdiest Zord in the world because of all the die casts making them a little too heavy in spots. But even the Thunder Megazord, which I thought was huge, the Astro Megazord is a lot bigger and bulkier than the Legacy Thunder Megazord. 
And I gotta say, the Legacy Zords, I mean, th this Legacy Thunder Megazord looks pretty cool, but man, he is he is wobbly and, and he is just kind of not the most stable of Megazords. But this Astro Megazord is, is really, really stable. Now, of course, he doesn't have separate parts to him, so he doesn't really come apart. But still, it's pretty freaking awesome. So I'm going to move the Thunder Megazord back over and hope that it does not fall apart. And just for one last little fun comparison, something a lot newer, here is the Super 7 Tyrannosaurus Dinosaurd. And you can see that the Tyrannosaurus is basically as tall as the Astro Megazord's leg. Um, I mean, this is a really fun comparison, though, because I feel like since these are both so new, uh, you know, they're just made a little bit, you know, differently. And they have, you know, all that kind of silver, shiny paint. But, wow, it is just a sight to behold. I'll put it that way. So let's go ahead and get rid of the Tyrannosaurus Dinosaur and take a look at this Astro Megazord. So he is quite heavy. Um, the shield and the sword are really, really cool. So you can see there's the shield there. Uh, now, I will say, you know, the hands were a little difficult to uh, get back on. I had a very easy time getting the hands off, but then trying to get new hands back on, that was a little tough. So I am going to go ahead and take the sword out. And I already gave you a good look at the sword in the unboxing, but there it is. It's really cool. And then I'm going to take out the shield here. Well, I guess the whole hand is not on there, so let me just take off the whole thing. So here's the shield. And the way the shield works, you have this little handle here. So you can push that handle in, and then it actually will turn somehow. I don't know how I did it. <laughs> It'll actually turn to where you can uh, change it back into the, uh, the ship. There we go. So you just turn it around like that. And now it's ready to go back into ship mode. So like I said, the hand already came off, but that's fine, whatever. So the hands do turn and twist, and they pop off really easy, like I said, but getting them back on is another story. We have uh, elbows that go up and down that much. Shoulders have a nice, solid joint there. You can hear the ratchet. The knees do bend. And again, another really super solid ratchet joint here. There's also some turning here, but you can't do a lot because they kind of get in each other's way. Uh, there is a turn or a rotate at the waist. And of course the head, if I can get it, the head turns and it has a tiny bit of tilt. And if you do this, there are the rangers sitting inside. How cool is that? That is so neat. So the rangers are sitting inside of the ship that makes up the head. And you can, like I said, you can bend the knees. You can uh, turn the arms and the elbows. It is pretty cool, I must say. So then uh, this can also be a weapon that he can hold. So I don't really want to do it because it's kind of hard to get this out, but there's a peg here and you can put that in the hand and then it's like a gun. And then I already showed the open hand, so I'm not going to put them on because like I said, it's kind of hard to get things on and off, but you can imagine what it'll look like with the hands open like that. So. I'm going to try, let's see if I can do this off camera here, try to put the fist back on because the fist is what you need for the ship mode, because I'm going to try to put him back into ship mode on camera here. So there's the fist looking amazing. The, the chrome is so well detailed. I did not have any trouble 
with this at all in terms of the transformation. I was a little scared at some points here and there. It felt like it was going to snap or it, was, it felt like it wasn't doing what you wanted it to do. But once you get the feel of it and once you kind of move stuff around, it feels really, really well made. So anyway, first thing you want to do is you're going to pop the head off. Oh, I guess I could have showed you the back. Not a lot of detail in the back. Uh, not really a surprise there. All the details definitely up front. But the ship here, it pegs in the back and then it slides in. So you can just slide it right back out. So here is the head up close. And then just to turn it back into the ship mode, you got to pull it upwards. Okay, so this is the way it sits on the head like this. You got to pull it upward and out, and then this part goes in, and then boom, you got the uh, the space shuttle. I can't remember the exact name of this thing. I know it had a name. It may have just been called the shuttle, actually, now that I think about it. But, all right, so it doesn't want to go completely together. I think I'm doing something not quite right here. Uh, well, I guess it's in there. I guess it's in there good enough. Um, I was thinking that it would snap in somehow, but I'm just not feeling it snapping. But you could just have the ship by itself, and you can still see the rangers where they would be in the shuttle. So that's pretty cool. So put the shuttle aside for a second. If I can get it to cooperate with me here, it wants to be just a tad bit difficult. There we go. All right. So I am going to kind of cheat a little bit and look at the instructions. I have a pretty good idea about how to go about doing it, but I want to try to make sure I'm doing it somewhat correct. So then what you're going to do is you're going to uh, bring the arms down so that they're up and down and straight, and then you unsnap them from these pegs. So you can see there's pegs that go in there. So you pull those back. Um, and then this part in the front comes up and like this. So now you got like, that's the front part, the upper leg part that kind of comes up and out of the way. Then I think probably the trickiest part for me was getting the legs just right because the legs, it, it, it's a little scary because it feels like they could break. But again, just be gentle, go easy on them because they kind of turn at the hip and then they also turn at like the upper thigh. And see, it's just, it feels real stiff and it's a little bit scary at first, but you'll kind of feel it. You'll get the right idea. I do need to kind of come off camera just a bit here to get the final turn. So like I said, this was the most challenging part for me because you got to kind of get it just right. And I don't want to break it. So let me turn it and then... And we are back. So I finally got the hips aligned the right way. So this is what you want it to look like. So here's the front. This is the part that was down in the front here. So you move these up and out of the way. And then this is what you end up with right here. So that's how you want the legs to look. And then you can just uh, pretty simply turn the legs upwards. And there's a peg in here. So right there. And the pegs just go in, so it snaps in, and then you got the front part here. And then you can kind of figure out what's going on with the arms, because the arms have a peg as well. So you just kind of push the arms in to their corresponding pegs. Let me get this one in there. There we go. So now the legs are pushed in all the way. You can put this part back down again. It doesn't want to, looks like it's hitting something. It doesn't want to go all the way down. All 
Hmm. That's weird because they both look like they're in the exact same position, and yet one. That's right. So then you have these little gun things, these little gun turrets that you can turn. And then, of course, in here, you got to, so there's these little things in here. You got to push those down. I said push those down. There we go. They snap in there. And then you can put the ship in here the way it's supposed to dock. And then this all goes together. So let me do this off camera because it takes both hands to get it just right. And then everything locks into place. And I got the fins up here. You can kind of bend those however which way. So there is the ship. And now I've got to put the other little doodads on. Oh, I think I did forget to put the shield back on. So let me do that. So the bottom part down here, this is where the shield latches into place. There's, you know, this part and it goes together. So it's actually pretty simple, which is good because I am not very good at these things. Um, as you can all already tell, I'm sure. You just gotta line up all the pegs and they just go right in. So there you go. Now you got the shield in the bottom there. And then you just snap the arms back in place. And we're almost set. So then we got to get the little uh, blaster side things. I don't know what you call them. So these little gray plastic parts, they just go right into the side. So let me go ahead and plug those in. So they snap in nice and tight. The other one on the other side. All right, and then this bottom gun, Got to figure out where this goes into. Oh, the bottom gun plugs into the shield. So there that goes. I am having kind of a hard time getting the shield to stay in there. There it goes. All right. So now you've got the gun in the bottom. And the sides, it is kind of hard to get a grip on, especially with one hand. But there you go. And I do believe that is it for the Astro Mega Ship. So this is a really fun toy. I really feel like I'm playing more with a transformer than anything else. Uh, but it's very fun, and I am going to be having so much fun playing with this thing. So uh, I would definitely recommend it. I do think it's actually worth the asking price, which is nice because these days that doesn't happen too often. Uh, if you wanna see what Andros looks like next to the ship, there you go. And I'll just move the camera down a bit here. All right, so there you go. That is the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Zap Astro Megazord. And I must say, it is quite a toy. It is quite a piece of engineering. And I'm very glad that I've added this to my collection. So feel free to let me know what you think. Are you going to pick up this Zord? And what is your favorite season of Power Rangers? Thanks for watching. Have a great day.